Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about a room splitting algorithm uh, that I came up with that makes use of some data structures and allows us to split a room up into a undetermined number of smaller segments so that we can spawn items in those small segments. Now, um, this is going to be designed so that each small segment of a room is a random size and um, it's not necessarily a perfect square. So it's going to be a bunch of randomly sized rectangles. And so the idea is uh, pretty simple at its core. Um, we're going to start off with a big room or a floor. We can call it a floor or a room, either one. Um, but So we have a big floor and uh, we're going to call this floor A. So we're going to have some sort of class or data structure that will um, hold the information for a particular floor and the floor will have its own upper left and lower right locations. And uh, the reason I only store the upper left and lower right is because if you know the upper left X and Y coordinates, then you know the lower left X and Y coordinates because the lower left X and Y coordinates are simply the upper left X component and the lower right Y component. So if you know lower right and upper left, you know all four of the corners. So we can store the upper left and lower right of uh, floor A. Now what we want to do is we want to use this, some sort of data structure to keep track of everything and I'd like to use the stack. Now a stack, if you aren't familiar, is a data structure that takes items in and stacks them on top of one another. So the last item that you put into the stack is the first item that you take out of the stack whenever you remove an item. So the way that you typically use a stack is you're inserting one item at a time and you're removing one item at a time. And any uh, anytime you remove an item, it's the last item put on top of the stack. And so the terms used with stack are typically push and pop. You use push to push an item onto the stack and you use pop to pop an item off of the stack. So if we have a stack to hold these floor uh, items, well basically what we're going to do is we're going to push A on top of the stack. So right now with our first, you know, as we start off with our first uh, room or floor, we're pushing that floor, call it A, on top of the stack and now we have a stack with one item in it and that's A. So after we have our first room, what we'd like to do is decide how we're going to split it up. Now first we're only going to split it once and we can usually um, use a random coin toss, if you will, to check whether or not we want to split it vertically or horizontally. So let's just say for uh, hypothetical reasons, we want to split it vertically. So here is A, right? We have A, this is the same sized floor, and we split it vertically into B and C. So B is the, uh, the part of A that has been uh, left on the left side, and C is the part of A that's left on the right side, and we split it right down the middle, and we can choose a random point in between the left and right boundaries of A. So if we want to split this up randomly into two uh, semi-random um, rectangles, we're basically going to pick some point along the x-axis here, choose that point, and split A in half. Now what we do is we take A off of the stack at this point. We've essentially popped off A from the stack, right? And we don't really need A anymore because we split it into B and C. So we can actually delete A, we can get rid of it, and now we have B and C. So now we have not just one big rectangle, but we have a, a, a room split into two rectangles. And we can then push B and C on top of the stack. It doesn't really matter what order we push them onto the stack, but we're pushing them onto the stack. And now our stack has two elements. It no longer has A, but it has B and C inside of it. Now we can continue doing this. We can do sort of a, a while loop if you will, and we can keep uh, popping off elements from the stack, splitting them in half, and then deleting the element, and then the two halves will be pushed back on top of the stack. So the stack is going to continue growing, and we're going to keep splitting items over and over again until some criteria is, is met. Uh, usually the criteria is the room is too small to split, so you can't split it anymore, or you make some random determination whether or not the room should be split further. And, um, and the more random you make that determination, the more random the sizes and shapes of the rooms that come out. So let's take a look at how this looks 
um, if we continue doing this. Okay, so let's say we have a big rectangle and we're gonna call it A. This is a floor node or a floor you know, data structure object. And we're going to uh, create a stack and we're gonna push that A object on top of the stack. So right now we have a stack and all that it has is a single element that we've pushed onto it and we're ready to start splitting. So we're gonna split A into B and C. So we're gonna pop A off of the stack. And now the stack, so here's our stack here. Uh, after we pop A off, there is no, there's nothing in the stack. We've just popped it off and it's empty. But A gets split into B and C. So say we split it vertically and we make a random uh, location. We choose a random location between the left and right bounds of A and we split it. Let's just say it gets split roughly right here. And now we've created B and C which will be pu pushed onto the stack. So push C onto the stack, push B onto the stack. If we push C on first, then we have C at the bottom. And if we push B on next, then we have B at the top. So now here's our stack. Okay, so A was popped off, we deleted it. Now we split it into B and C. We create two new rectangle floor nodes and we stick those onto the stack. And now what we do is we look at the top of the stack. So we pop B off of the stack and we say, should we split B? And according to our criteria, we either say yes or no. We'll say, uh, okay, is B big enough to split? And then uh, we do some random number determination like a dice roll and say, uh, depending on whatever odds we set, should B be split or not? And let's say um, we determined that B should be split. So then what happens is we get rid of B and we split it into D and E, two more floor nodes. And so B, we make the random determination whether to split vertically or horizontally. Let's say we split this one horizontally and we pick a random location from the upper and lower bounds of B. And let's just say that happens to be right here. And we can call this D and E. And so D and E now need to get pushed back onto the stack. So now the stack looks like this. We still have C at the bottom. We popped off B and we deleted it, split it into D and E, and now we push D and we push E. So let's push D onto the stack and let's push E onto the stack. And so now our stack looks like this. It has D, uh, it has C, D, and E. So then we continue, we pop one off at the top of the stack. So we pop off E and let's say that we make the determination that E should not be split. Okay, no problem. We'll, we've popped it off of the stack, we've removed it, we don't need it anymore. So we can go ahead and say that we're done with E. Then we can look at whatever's on top of the stack again. So we pop off the next one. So let's pop off D and determine whether or not we should split D. And let's say we determine, yes, we should split D and we choose horizontally or vertically. Let's say we choose horizontally. And so D can be split into uh, F and G. So D is no more. We split it. I can't remember if I said horizontally or vertically. Let's just say horizontally. And we'll call this F and G. And D is no more. We popped it off. We're done with it. And now, since we removed D from the stack, we created F and G, now we can push those onto the stack. So let's push F and let's push G. And now our stack looks like this. And so we're gonna continue doing so. Let's, uh, let's pop G off of the stack. Let's say we split it. We can split G into H and I. Let's say we split it vertically this time. And here's H and here's I. So G is no more, we popped it off, we split it into H and I, and now we need to push H and I onto the stack. So G's gone, now we have H, push that on, and I, push that on. Okay, so now you're starting to see how this is getting split up in a random manner. And notice C hasn't been split, it's, it was one of the first squares created, one of the first rectangles, and it's stuck here at the bottom of the stack. And we're keeping, we're continuing to push more items onto the stack, and it looks like C might never get split. But eventually, we'll make our way all the way down to C, and we will finish 
going through every single item in the stack. So we're gonna pop off I, let's say I is small enough and we determined not to split it, so we don't need I anymore. So we pop off H, let's say we're done splitting H, we're done with that, we don't need H anymore. We pop off F, let's say we're satisfied with F, don't need that anymore. And finally we get down to C, we pop that off. Let's say, oh, C is really big. Let's say the size of the room affects how likely it is to be split. So um, we could make some sort of uh, a random number affected by the size of the room. That's pretty easy to do. So C is pretty big, so we determine that it should be split. And there still may be a chance that we should stop splitting C as well, depending on our algorithm. But let's say we do decide to split C. Let's randomly determine to split it horizontally. And we'll split C into J and K. And we have J, we have K, and we push those onto the stack. We get rid of C, and now our stack has J and K. So our stack goes this way, right? Okay, so C's gone. We split it into J and K, and then we do just keep doing the same thing. We keep popping them off. Let's say we're done splitting K, we're done splitting J. We get to the end of the stack, it's empty, there's nothing else to split. Well, then our algorithm is done. And we say we have finished splitting the room, and we're left with a floor that is split into a random number of randomly sized rectangles. And then we have ourselves a sort of randomized grid in which we can spawn uh, some item at random locations inside of each floor node, each rectangle. So this is a really useful algorithm, and this is a good way to partition a room up into uh, randomly sized little chunks. And in fact, these don't have to be rooms. They could be, uh, they could be spaces in an outdoor area where you want to spawn a tree. So let's say we, we've partitioned up this, this uh, outdoor area and we've got these little, these little items here. And let's say we have trees and we want to spawn a tree here. You know, we could take a random point in here. We can spawn a tree here. We could spawn a bush here. We could spawn a fire hydrant here. Let's say fire hydrant. And, and it could be anywhere inside the bounds, right? So put it right there. We could spawn maybe a, another tree here and a rock right here. And so if you're not looking at the grids, right? The end user isn't gonna see the grid. They're not even gonna know it's there. All they're gonna see is a bunch of randomly placed items or objects and, uh, and, and basically you've got effectively a nice procedural algorithm that will spawn items. Now this is also applicable to things like random dungeon generators. So say you wanna have a dungeon, you wanna have a bunch of randomly sized rooms, well this is that's pretty easy to do. You've already got what looks like the layout to a bunch of randomly sized rooms. So if you could figure out a way to connect these rooms with doors, say we have a door here, we have a door here, door here, door here, door here, and a door here. Well, now we have a building with a bunch of rooms. And of course, if you had some other algorithm that could take a room, like say this one, and say, okay, turn this into a hallway system. All right, well, instead of a room, we can just spawn hallways like this. And now this is no longer a room, but a hallway like that. So now you have you know, room one, room two, room three, four, and five, and then you have a hallway system connecting rooms one, four, and two. And so this is all something that is doable. I've done it, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, so um, that's coming up in uh, the following, the, the future videos. So uh, this uh, concludes the theory behind partitioning a room into randomly sized uh, chunks. This is at least one way to do it. And uh, next we're going to dive into um, the actual code. Let's get into Visual Studio. Let's get into Unreal Engine. And let's partition a floor into random, random sized uh, little rectangles and spawn some items in them. So that is coming up next. All right. I'll see you soon.